careful. Let it let it slide. I got it. All right. All right. Hello. Welcome aboard COD. A very chilly COD. I'm director Paul Ferrace. And uh, we are going to uh, do a little bit of restoration that kind of uh, came out of the blue. He, uh, people have often asked when they look at the uh, torpedo rooms, the upper bunks, how do they get up there? Well, the uh, quick answer is the shipyard, at least Electric Boat Company, made small metal ladders, at least one we know for each of the two torpedo rooms that would give sailors access to the upper bunks, but not necessarily the, the uh, penthouse or the uh, uh, presidential suite up there. It's a different matter. We'll talk about that in a minute. But for the, uh, the six upper bunks, they had small metal ladders that I am told by the COD crew that saw the put the boat in commission, the first thing they did was throw those overboard because they were really unnecessary. Unnecessary because, number one, the average enlisted man on a submarine is 22 years old, so they're natural acrobatics or monkeys. Uh, the other more important reason is electric boat has these strong backs that when you're at sea, they're locked across the way so you can unlock your uh, torpedo trays and maneuver the, uh, the fish to reload. So you've got these here, up forward, middle, and aft, and these are natural uh, footholds to get up to these upper bunks. So you didn't really need these ladders, but uh, they appear in uh, the famous uh, wartime paintings of the Robalo. Uh, she was built, uh, I believe she's a, she's a, let's check. I should, well, I have to take the back, my freshwater submarines. I believe she's a, uh, um, a uh, Manitowoc boat, and I need to check the back, but uh, yeah, Evan's shaking his head. So Robalo is a Manitowoc boat. So Manitowoc boats being a follow-on to electric boat, they would have followed the same procedure. So uh, there was a combat artist, a watercolor artist, who rode Roballo for a short period of time and did some really incredibly valuable uh, watercolors of the interior. Now, why they're really valuable is the fact that uh, the photography technology of the day, black and white, uh, they did have color, but it was a big process to, to take color pictures. But these color uh, watercolors uh, captured things that uh, photography couldn't capture, like just how much the uh, the red light glowed, uh, the green uh, um, radium paint on the uh, diving gauges and things. Uh, that's captured in these uh, very, very important uh, watercolors, as are the only images we know of of these ladders um, in the torpedo room. And... Uh, through movie magic, Evan's going to insert some of those pictures uh, right about here so you can see what we're talking about, uh, these uh, little metal ladders, again, that disappeared. Now, for years I've known that it probably would be nice to have those replicated. Our focus date, of course, is technically uh, right after the war. Uh, we wouldn't have, we would have thrown those overboard, but I always thought it might be good at least to tell people, yes, this is how the Navy intended for you to get up into the upper bunks, but it wasn't necessary. So we, we do tell people that, our, our tour guides, but it'd be nice to have a ladder and say, well, this is how the Navy intended you to get up there, but we didn't need them and we threw them overboard. This is a replica. Well, the other day I happened to be going through uh, a thrift store in Cleveland, and you know that's one of the things I do is go through thrift stores. I have actually found pieces of cod in Cleveland thrift stores. Uh, again, subject for another story. But um, this one uh, uh, thrift store happens to sell uh, unsold furniture from a, a rather large uh, furniture chain, and there were some eight-foot-tall bookcases, uh, brand new that had attached metal ladders so you could put stuff up on the upper shelves, which I saw those and I said, oh my God, those ladders are exactly what are in the pictures. And again, uh, you'll see compare and contrast. Um, 
So we got a good deal on those. I, I convinced the manager to sell me the ladders, not the uh, very expensive bookcases. So here they are. Now, they were a bronze color. Uh, I did a quick and dirty paint job uh, in silver. And let's just say that Evan and I, getting them down into the boat, we, uh, um, we aged, we, uh, we distressed them. <laughs> so now they look like they might be 80, uh, 81 years old. But uh, we're going to do a little test. Uh, as you can see, this is what sold me, these little uh, uh, welded on hooks. Um, what's the best one to do? And I'm going to do this one. Uh, man. So it hooks to the upper thing, and, and there you go. You can get into this bunk, which is probably the worst bunk to sleep in here. That's why it was used by Fred Mulligan, who is a motor machinist, mate. What the heck he was doing up here in the forward torpedo room, but that was Fred Mulligan's bunk on the last patrol. Uh, again, it works very well right there. Uh, again, not the bunk you want to have, uh, given the, uh, the um, AC motor, uh, bow plane uh, tilting motor right here, and the uh, rescue uh, float release uh, wheel right there. But again, if I'm stuck with sleeping in this bunk, um, yeah, <laughs> I, I can't imagine how somebody gets up here with the, uh, with the shaft coming through here uh, and that gear... Uh, box, but you know what? Uh, if it's your home and you're tired enough, you'll sleep there. So let's try it down here. Again, we have two of them. Um, oh yeah, that that just works out perfectly. Um, and that gets. I'm also load testing it. Here's a. 290 <clears throat> plus pound uh, load stress test. Wow, there's some uh, stuff up here we need to clean a little better. Our housekeeping isn't what it should be. Uh, but here's a great picture from uh, uh, one of our tour guides uh, of some sailors in the forward torpedo room with a Ciro. Um, there's no ladder present, but you can see just what they're dealing with. And uh, so I'll leave that up here. Uh, but yeah. Imagine if you're uh, tired and you want to get up there and this is going to work. It's going to work pretty much everywhere. Except, again, for here. But uh, I would imagine, because um, I don't see any pictures of this, if you get up to that bunk, you can hop over and get up on this. Uh, I don't believe any of our current living subvets have any experience with these because, again, uh, I was told that uh, they were thrown overboard. But for what we paid for these, although not as expensive as you might think, we don't want to waste that money. So nobody's throwing these overboard. But if any of you subvets have had any experience with these, please uh, chime in, uh, mention that in the comments. You know, this is always very beneficial for us because it's a two-way street. We impart some information and, and we learn a few things ourselves. So, um, of course, my replica flash cover here is, is kind of generously apportioned. So, there we go. Uh, we'll have to put that there and I may have to put a little sign. Don't climb on this, please. Uh, but uh, there we go. A little bit of restoration uh, on USS Cod, bringing her back uh, to her wartime configuration and telling the story of how men lived in their subs. Um, we've got the second one. We'll uh, take that back uh, to the after torpedo room. Remember to uh, give us a like, uh, hit that subscription button um, and uh, hit the notification button uh, so that you'll be uh, alerted when we uh, put some more stuff up. So thanks for joining us and stay warm.